Also mein Name ist Marcel Reif. Ich arbeite fürs Fernsehen und das schon seit, wie ich festgestellt habe, 39 Jahren. Ich bin 60 Jahre alt, kommentiere Fußball beim Pay-TV-Sender Sky. Dort bin ich Chefkommentator. Und ansonsten habe ich immer noch Spaß am Fußball. Der spricht wunderbare politische Kommentare, aber bitte schön lassen vom Fußball. <lacht> Gomez, Tor Nummer 4! Lanich hat alle Zeit. Zagado lässt ihn gewähren, das ist ja schon Frevel. Worauf muss man denn achten, wenn man Fußball kommentiert? Das ist so, so banal wie nur was, nur ich versuche so zu sprechen wie im richtigen Leben. Und verlangen Sie jetzt bitte keine kühle Analyse. Gucken Sie ein bisschen die Bilder an und denken Sie selber drüber nach. I am Robert Marawa, I'm a South African, I'm a sports lover, I'm a soccer lover, I'm a broadcaster and more importantly, I'm a person that's looking forward to the World Cup. Good evening, welcome. This is Harambe, the interactive show. And we give you an opportunity as well of winning this fantastic Copanya Ball. This is the official FIFA Confederations Cup Ball 2009. And officially welcome to the stadium, right to your world of champions. They've been waiting long and hard. The tickets for this particular game were sold out as early as Wednesday in the midst of the debate about the strength of the derby. Well, they, they seem to have uh, really broken into the Orlando Pirates uh, defense there. And once again, in the box, Abiyan Ali, you look back at that and say, should have been. Madam Premier, good to have you at the Orlando Stadium. What have you made of the first half? Quite exciting. What is most important is the mood in the stadium, a resemblance of uh, the fact that Gauteng is a home of champions. Just give me 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Let me mm. think about it. Okay, that's yeah. all you needed to score a goal now and again. <laughs> <laughs> Ich bin das erste Mal in Südafrika. Ich weiß, dass hier eine Fußball-WM stattfinden wird, die mich den ganzen Sommer über eigentlich beschäftigen wird. Ich komme aber heute jetzt her mit nichts als ein paar Vorurteilen. I'm expecting to go to Soccer City virtually for the first time inside the stadium. I've seen it from the outside. It's looking in, in great form and obviously exciting times, especially with the big countdown towards the World Cup. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting anything that's thrown at me. You know, it's a, it's a blank piece of paper, but I'm ready to roll. Good day. I am Marcel. Hi, nice Marcel to meet you. Marcel Roberts, yeah, good to see you. Good to see yeah. you. And welcome to South Africa. Thank you very much. Yeah. The first time. And this is very, very impressive. I think when this thing started, the building of the stadium, it was all a dream, you know, that everybody had as far as the World Cup is concerned. And to see it finished in, in this way, and to see it also at night and how it lights up, you know, for me, it, it's really remarkable. It, it's, it's a journey that has been going on for so long. And when you look at the old soccer yeah. city and how small that was compared to this, I mean, this is, this is world standard. And I think we're just looking forward to the event happening now. So you, you'll be coming for the World Cup itself? Sure. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Tickets bought, everything sorted? Well, <laughs> my company, I hope they buy the tickets. <laughs> No, no, I'll, I'll do... How many matches are you, are you going to come to? Well, we, we're going to do everything. We'll be broadcasting from I the know, first we, match. We as well, and, but you, you... Yeah, you I, yeah, I don't know how many, but we'll, 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 we'll see. But as many as, as I can, we'll be doing magazine shows, 
you know, life behind the scenes of, of the players and the stadiums and the cities and everything like that. So it's going to be a full package. It's not just going to be the football matches. It's yeah, going to be everything yeah. around the World Cup. Yeah. I remember 1990 in Italy. This had the the atmosphere. This had the you know that was football was really coming home somewhere. Yes. It's, it's, yes. Italy is an incredibly yes. football country, like for children. Yes. And I loved it very much. Those six weeks were like a dream, like a dream. So you still remember? I remember everything. everything. I remember yeah. everything. I can remember the, how it smelled, how it, the music, how it yeah. sounded. Germany was different because we, we were the host broadcast and we had to do yes. so many things. But there I could only enjoy. And I'm looking forward for this. Yeah, I think everyone's excited. It's not, a, yeah. it's not a small tournament. This is massive. And I know what the challenges are. Yeah. I mean, we have limitations when it comes to, like, road travel underground systems okay. and so on you know um, and also just hoping that our national team does well are they, they, they good enough well that's why i'm wearing the jersey today okay. i thought you, you know do, you do your best <laughs> well it's a pleasure to see you okay. and welcome welcome Thank we're gonna you. enjoy the journey in there yeah i'm looking forward to show me yeah. everything yeah perfect perfect welcome to it welcome to it can you have a busy day today huh you have a yeah. radio show? Uh, radio, TV, hey. a birthday. It's your birthday today? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> the, thank you, thank you, thank you so All much. All the best, all yeah. the best, young man. Oh, you're what, you're 32? Mid-30s. Welcome to Soccer City, Ooh. welcome to the venue of the opening ceremony, welcome to the wow. venue of the first match wow. on the 11th of June, welcome to the venue of the final on the 11th of July. Wow. Soccer City. Hey, this is really something. Fantastic. What's the impression? Really good. Hey? This is a really, really good soccer stadium. Let me ask you one thing. Will you will you be able to make proper use of it afterwards? I think for soccer, yes. Um, because it, it won't be filled up every time. I think there, there are two occasions when it's possibly going to be full. When you've got your big derby between Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates. And then they have an annual charity spectacular, almost like a charity shield. I'm asking, I don't want to spoil the, the party, but yeah. you know, when, when I was in Korea and Japan, they yes. built stadiums uh, in a natural park. Yeah for 60,000 people and the league isn't as it should be yes. to to get say 40,000 per minute. they have 10 15,000 yes. so you have something that is good for the world cup everybody's saying hey great yeah. and then afterwards you don't know what to do with it i mean we're, we're in a difficult situation in south africa is that uh, yeah, you know. and i think it just goes back to the political history of should the country yeah. mm -hmm. the whole political history of the country yeah. where you had that divide where your, where your black people would support soccer, your white people support rugby and cricket. So you find on a day when Kaiser Chiefs are playing Orlando Pirates here at Soccer City, there'll be a big rugby game happening at Ellis Park, and you almost see two different worlds mm -hmm. in the same city. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And yet when Manchester United comes here, like they have been doing for the past couple of years, to play in the Vodacom Challenge with Pirates and Chiefs, mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, the white population that you don't see during the league season, all of a sudden are coming out. And they're coming out to support Manchester United. They're not coming to support yeah. Kaiser yeah, Chiefs or the Orlando Pirates. The divide is very big. The people are extreme. It's not every white South African that doesn't like the soccer. Uh, but I think the majority will almost say, well, let's see how they do. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. It's almost like... We're not part of it, yeah. so let's see how they do. Or if you have your national soccer team jersey, and you, you hear people saying in the office that someone said to them, hey, is your team going to do well in the World Cup? But you South African, I'm South African, but you're saying, is your team going to do well? You know, which is, which is a crazy thing. But yeah. uh, I think we look beyond that. Uh, people that still think like that. 
we, we pray for them. Are you helping us with the tour? What? <laughs> hey? Like you're entering someone's house, this yep. change room, eh? Look here. Wow, wow, wow. So who do you think gonna be here on the let's make a bet on the eleventh of July? Oof. 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 What's your bet? My bet is I don't know whether it can come out, but Spain and Brazil. Give me two minutes, I'll okay. think about it. Okay. <laughs> it's possible. I'm not sure if any of the African countries are ready to this is for go me, all the way. For me, this is going to be the most interesting thing, because I've been watching African Cup of Nations. game 1990, when Cameroon came yes, to, yes. and they played beautifully. Yes. But, and then they ended up playing a boys game, yes. Ivory Coast, I don't know, I've always, always said Ivory Coast, Ivory Coast, Ivory Coast. They've had it all, they've had all the star players that they have now. They haven't conquered the Cup of Nations in recent years. The World Cup has still become a pretty much foreign thing yeah. for them. And if they lose out again in this particular World Cup, it's going to take maybe another 15 year loop for them to get back to winning ways again. But so yeah. do you have a, a thing, a very secret thing in mind? I think for, what, for the African countries, I would rather even go for a Ghana, mm -hmm. surprisingly, mm -hmm. because you're trying to mix the youth element yeah. versus yeah. what they have in experience. If, this, and if, what they, if they can the, manage to do this, correct. they're yeah. very young yeah. with the experience, correct. but the very young are very, very young. And then it's a, it's a tournament like this with all the the things around you. It's it might a be a bit too much. Well. Yeah, it might be a little bit. But yeah, the talent is there. Yeah. Yeah. But still, you'd say Brazil, Spain is yeah, yeah. not the, not yeah. not too much out of the. Yeah, that for sure. Unless it's a major surprise. Let's, let's if, it's, if, it's, and... if it's Brazil and Spain. Yeah, we're on the same. Page. We celebrate. We're on the same <laughs> thing, and we celebrate together. <laughs> this is what to warm up. It looks like it, huh? If it was boxing, I'd think this were punching bags. Yeah? What is this? Warm-up? Warm -up. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, but because I think that's, it's better if they warm up inside, not outside. Right. I want to see him just Walk once in to and come play. walk in. Yeah. yeah but you know, they never do that in Italy. In Italy, they don't... In Germany, they, they yeah. warm up for, for 40 minutes. Yeah. And you, everybody sees them. I think that the climax should be yeah. when... See they, them for the first time yeah. when they're coming to play. Yeah. So how early will you come through for, for the World Cup? How soon? I'll be, I'll be very late because I'm... I'm no, they will listen. Uh, I'm, I'm marrying on the 6th of June. Oh. And I leave on the 8th of wow. June. I'll be here by the 9th. It's a nice big wedding in Germany? In Switzerland, actually. Oh, Switzerland. And, um, Lovely. Off. To the really important things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to go up to the TV booth, so uh -huh. this is just, okay. just going through the side here. Yeah. Oh. These are your TV booths. Oh. Oh, behind glass. Not the best? For uh, I don't you need like it open. I, eh? I need it. I always wanted it open. But I think though. I don't know I how they use Yeah, 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 I think there's going to be... Yeah, there will be stuff yeah. down here. I mean, this, this, will, this will not be enough for the final. Yeah, it's one, know. two, three, four, six. Yeah, I think, I it's think it's they'll four. need a couple more. I think just for probably one or two yeah, select yeah. media. It won't be for everyone. No, no, this is going to be the media. You know, yeah, I'm sure. They all do it from here. Yeah. Nice, open, yeah. capture the stuff yeah. down here. Uh, Part of the problem that you have in multi-purpose stadiums is that there's so much distance between where you are yeah. as fans and where the ground is. And that's simply because it will be used as a multi-purpose stadium, so they're going to put an athletics track around, oh, so no. they need to accommodate for that. That's nice about having an all-out soccer football stadium, sure. is that you get the benefits, which is really being close to the action. Yeah.
The stadium in Germany, the Schalke stadium, which yes. is which you can close. The pitch, they have to take it out. They, they, do you know that? What after the game? After the game, the, the yeah. pitch is being rolled out into plain air outside the stadium. The whole pitch. Oh, then and, they. Then they roll it back for the match, and then it roll it. And, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. Remember when the old days when we took two stones as a goal and the players <laughs> played play play. somewhere out there? <laughs> Nobody took the pitch out. No, so you know you got standards, you got FIFA, they want and, this and, pitch, they and want this and this uh, color and this and this. I don't know, maybe one day it's gonna be one screw too much. Yeah, you no should reason. have the respect for the game. Yeah. This is very, very important. Because it becomes a, a little bit too much in the end. I have from a from a former marriage, I have two small boys, it's yeah. nine and seven. They are soccer crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And you know when, when we lose those children, when they say Hey, it's the same like on a, on a video. On the PlayStation. On the PlayStation. Yeah. And why don't we stick to the PlayStation? We have the better tricks. And they play for nil-nil out there. And on my PlayStation, we, we win 5-4. <laughs> you see, then it's becoming yeah. very, very dangerous. It's the only danger for soccer. Otherwise, soccer will survive us all. But Maybe we, we keep asking ourselves, why is football so badly attended now as opposed to before? And, I'm, and I kept thinking, you know, maybe in the end, we will rue the day that we started trying to make real life out of these games. Yeah. They know you from television? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All they all nice. like you or are you are you do they the the one say you are more for the pirates? No, 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 no. You see I don't support. I don't I don't I keep either, it very but... neutral. But you know, people always wanna know. They, they, or they'll try and trick you and say, yeah, 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 I know you're supporting Chiefs. And you say, no. I say, no. I say, oh, Pirates. I say, no. <laughs> oh, Sundowns. I say, no. <laughs> and I say, who then? I say, no one. Support national team. team. <laughs> but they still don't believe you. No, it's the same with me. I go, I'm whatever, sure you also get accused whatever, whatever, of supporting. Whatever I go, when I go to Munich, they say, you hate Munich. When I go to there, they say, you hate that. You, and you love Munich. Yeah. And I say, why don't you talk to each other? <laughs> Leave me alone. Just... But that's that's when you know you're doing a good job. And that's what I always say. It couldn't be that know. bad as long as you both hate me. Exactly. Maybe I'm know. bad, but yeah. I'm not that bad. To Alexandra. Thank Township. you. How many people live here? Oh, if it's. Uh, I wouldn't put it past uh, over 2.5 million. But like I said, there's a, a tournament they normally play, uh, the Alfred Peary tournament, every year, named after the player that played in Turkey. Mm -hmm. And they really come and pack the grandstands here. And it is. Oh, you, you get the, the, that raw vibe. I mean, you were talking about the, the game going back to what it's supposed to be. <laughs> this is yeah, it. This is it. Yeah, this is it. Where your grass gets cut every now and again. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's just typical football skills, raw township type of play. Yeah. Hi, Hi gentlemen. How are you there? Nice yeah. to meet you, Robert. How's it Robert? going? Yeah, yeah. good. I've met you before, you. right? Yeah. Remember. Marcel. Hi. Marcel, very nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Uh, welcome to Three Square, guys. Um, my name is Mike. I represent Football for Hope. Um, Football for Hope is a movement led by FIFA and Street Football World, and we're responsible for many of the social legacy projects of the 2010 FIFA World Cup. Um, this area where we are, this is going to be the site of something called the Football for Hope Festival 2010, and it's going to be a huge event for us, a global celebration of the power of football to change kids' lives. And we're going to have 32 teams competing in a kind of mini World Cup here. There'll be a stadium right here on this grass pitch. Um, and they're basically teams all from organisations using football to make a difference in children's lives. And we've got one of those organisations operating here on this grass pitch. Um, it's an organisation called Play Soccer. 
and they use football to teach kids life skills. It could be anything from why they should brush their teeth to the right kind of friends to keep to peer pressure to safe sex. Otherwise working hard still, hey? Yeah, working very hard. Uh, Robert, as you'll know, it's uh, getting very close to the, uh, to the FIFA World Cup. Too close. <laughs> and, and for us, it's a, it's a very special World Cup because yeah. for the first time, an official part of the World Cup is going to be this side of the game. Yes. It's going to be mm -hmm. soccer, not just to find the next Teco Modiza or yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah. but soccer to actually um, give kids a better chance in life. This is it. This is soccer. It's the same, the same picture when I, when I go, when my little boys play, yeah. and they have a tournament. The, the, the same. The, the, both brothers look like this. Yeah. I was just thinking, make him black, make him white, make him whatever. Good, bro. When I look at my age group, uh, some of them are, are in jail, some of them have passed on, and some are alcoholics, the ones that we talk and see, and uh, some are highly in high places uh, through opportunities that have been created. So I think it's very important for them to have some personal management skills so as to have a choice in life. <laughs> I think I could stay here for, for ages. Watch. It's amazing. Eh? Always the same. I think just the formative years of, of how it all begins. Also, I remember watching the old uh, Cristiano Ronaldo DVD of just his growth from an early age and I mean people will form different opinions about the guy now but one thing you can't take away is the work rate that he always puts into everything that he does. Ask Ferguson. Yeah, Ferguson will tell you he has never had a more professional player than, than Cristiano Ronaldo which all with, with all the talent I mean we, we could spoil you. And mm -hmm. today, everyone, when he, his key comes onto the pitch, everybody's watching him. Yeah, exactly. Even his teammates, when yeah. they're training, will be watching him. You go through life and there'll always be the one standout kid mm -hmm. that will have the Maradona type of talent. Yeah. That will have an Eric Cantona kind of talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just the ability to turn games. Yeah. When you are there, you are felt. When you are not there, people realize that something's missing in this mm -hmm, arena, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not everybody. But one of the things we're going to do with the festival is we play with a very different kind of soccer. We play mixed teams, boys and girls, with no referees. And the thinking behind this is that every disagreement the kids have on the pitch, they have they to have resolve to. through talking. Um, now, as an Englishman, I didn't believe it when I first heard of it, um, because in our football that would never work. No, but it's in Colombia they do it. In exactly Columbia, right. And that, that's where they started this, yeah. and it yeah. worked. It worked. Yeah. And in Germany also, they yeah. have something called Strassen Fußball for tolerance. Yeah. Excuse my pronunciation. Yeah, no, it's good. South Africans feeling African? African all round, or...? Mm -hmm. I would say so. Um, <laughs> I think we are. It's just that when... I think it's also part of a problem where the rest of Africa almost has a belief that South Africans believe otherwise. Mm -hmm. That... That's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but... Uh, I feel African as, in as many ways as I possibly can with everyday experiences. Because I've never once maybe in, ingrained it upon myself that we are, as South Africa, privileged in a lot of ways that we might even sort of teeter on being Western or anything like that. Uh, I never have. I just think there are a lot of things that you see every day that ground you and say, mm. you know, there are a lot of things that South Africans on the African continent have a, 
adapted, uh, which are very Eurocentric, very westernized, and which was a fair point, but I don't think it should remove the Africanness in people. You know. In South Africa, when cities were constructed, they were not constructed to the benefit of the entire population. So that's why now, when you find that your transport system is lagging, it's not lagging because of what has happened in the past 10 years or 15 years. It was infrastructural, so it's something that happened many, many years ago. Yeah, and you tend to forget, I mean, from outside you forget those things. You, yeah. you think, I mean, come on, it's over now. Yeah. Stick together and live together. Exactly. And, Let's move happily ever after. And then say, if, if we try to. Then the realities come out. Yeah. Because yeah. Well, you, you, you can't, it doesn't matter if a World Cup is coming or an Olympic Games is coming. Those sort of rail networks that are there in London, that are there in Germany, all around the world, those things are many, many decades yeah. in existence. You're strictly a TV man. Mm -hmm. You don't do this crazy stuff we do. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. No, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hello, everybody, and welcome to what you've all been waiting for. The Discovery Sports Center. The Discovery Sports Center. With Robin Robin Rawa. It's gone eight minutes after the hour six. Metro Van, the Discovery Sports Centre. Good evening. Welcome to it. It's good to be back in the country. And a big thanks there to Joe Mann, together with BBK, for having held the fort last week while we were away in the freezing cold of the United Kingdom and the freezing cold of London. You sort of come back and it's all systems go here in South Africa because it's going to be a big day tomorrow. It's going to be a big one. A hundred days to go before the FIFA World Cup here in South Africa. So all roads leading down to Durban and already there's going to be a, a bit of a dab and feel on the show uh, tonight. You all right? So say Rafe, eh? Rafe, Rafe, yeah? With us, yeah, I've pretty much spent the entire day uh, with this gentleman, Marcel Reif, who's a sports commentator, who's the chief commentator, in fact, for Sky Sports Germany, and is in the country, I don't know, for how long? How long are you in the country for? Marcel? Exactly, till tomorrow 1800. Um, Welcome to Metro Van. Welcome to South Africa. Thank Welcome you very much, to the show. Thank you. And how's it been so far with your experience? Great. We visited the stadium today. Yeah. Soccer City, which is amazing. I walked in, obviously, myself for the very first time, uh, walking into Soccer City. I've always seen it from the outside. And, and I almost got this hint from you of what was going through your head. I think there was almost this deadly silence. Uh, that was then coupled by an expression. First, it's wow. Wow. It's, it's very, very big, but still you can see very well. There was somebody working on the pitch, and we went up, up, up on the roof, and we could really see him well. So this is what I, what I want about a football stadium. No track around, nothing. This is pure football atmosphere, and I think uh, you've done a great job here with that stadium. Now, we've heard so many reports, negative reports coming through, given the Bayern Munich president uh, had also uttered a few words that... From far, far away. Exactly. Not that anyone's doing it for him, but for him to speak advisedly, having firstly seen 
or maybe taking the time, get on the plane. If we need South Africans to finance, and we will finance, and we'll bring him along. <laughs> but to make such comments, you know, for me, it was just totally out of order. Yeah, I, I, I think he had many, many other things to do. So if you don't have a, a, a clear impression, do not talk. I think there were politics involved as well. Um, Bayern Munich and the FIFA and Blatter. And this is very unfair to the people who do their, who do their job here. Let the Bafana Bafana go through the, the first round. Then I think it's going to be the, the World Cup we all expect. I think one thing, and, and we always openly talk about it on this show, is that um, we've always bemoaned the fact that we are so many years behind in development. Uh, but obviously development has nothing to do with the World Cup that we're going to be playing in now because it's all about results. Maybe this moaning has become a bad habit. This is, um, I was 92, now it's 2010, 18 years, it's not very, very much, but it's not as little as you can, so that you could hide behind mm -hmm. all this. They are on track, the stadiums will be state of art, let's hope the, the football will be as much fun as football can be, and it uh, will depend as well on the Bafana Bafana. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for Germany, of course. <laughs> I, to have a nice and successful World Cup, I think we all have to cheer for the Bafana Bafana as well. Thank you so much, Marcel. Thanks for coming on to the show. A pleasure. So I'm now off to the TV, right? Yeah, off to TV on air in about 40 minutes. All kept living there. Shirt. Okay, this is super Ooh. sport. <laughs> this is where all the live action happens. Hey Jacques, how's this? You good? Yeah. Strong. Yeah. Shall we wait here? No, come through, it's fine. Johnny. Are you good? Yeah. Have a good one. Like a... Don't turn us down when we invite you for our metro show, like I said to you last never, time. Never, never. Yeah. Run away. I mean, really. <laughs> Off the fielding. Yeah. Is that normal? Chief commentator? Jesus. Tattoo. Okay. okay. It's a massive show coming up here on Extra Time. Good evening. Welcome to the Tier World of Champions at Super Sport. As we look back at the weekend, you look back, not much happened, did it? But hey, first division, plenty uh, happened. We'll certainly catch up with that. And also in the studio, coming all the way from Germany, uh, commentator for Sky Sports, Marcel Reif, joining me here. Came into the country. Marcel, welcome. Nice to be here. I think it's 10 hours ago. <laughs> 10, 12, 12 hours ago. That's a major day tomorrow. The big countdown, 100 days to go today, 101 days to go. Just from what you've seen, the level of excitement from, from your side as a commentator. Well, I'm not on an ex inspection tour. and In 10 yeah. hours, I, I cannot give difficult. you a comprehensive uh, impression. Now, what I see is that um, there are the colors, the banners, people talk about it. But then um, there's still a lot of work to do outside the stadium, which is normal. We had it the same way in Germany. We had our World Cup 2-6. But I see people are talking about it. You see the colors and you see the enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Now the question will be, how far will your national team, the Bafana Bafana, go? <laughs> because, you know, once, <laughs> once the fans of the local team become uh, guests at their own World Cup, 
then it's getting difficult. So they should go through the first stage at least. Because I, I can tell you from, from what we experienced in Germany, 2006, the German team wasn't the third best in the world. Mm. Never ever. Never ever. And the players, you took them one by one by one by one. No. But then suddenly it became a team. The whole nation got behind it. The whole country got behind it and got on the wings and then it, and it began to fly. So that's what I wish you here. So what about Germany though? Now let's say four years down the line since 2006 as a footballing nation is is this the world cup for them a german team in a in a tournament is always a pain for the others because they will not give anything away for free mm. you have to if you if you have to want to beat them you have to do your job but i think they are not a favorite yeah and and i think it's an important point uh, doc mm. you would have been part of the the mass appeal of supporters in 1996. Mm. So you would know how important <coughs> it is, although it was a smaller tournament, <laughs> but the Nations Cup was massive in South Africa and for Bafana Bafana to have gone through to the knockout stages was huge. No, it was huge, mm. uh, Robbie. You must understand in 96, um, it's like today. Yeah. A lot of guys, they think South Africa won't make it through the knockout stages mm. or to the last 16, mm. you know. But then, uh, having said that, I mean, it's a different ball game today because, mm. I mean, we're talking about the game has changed. Everything has changed, mm. you know. But uh, I'll remain a strong South African yes. and their number one fan. Quarterfinals? And uh, I will, look, I would say they will qualify. Yeah. For what? But they will qualify. To the last 16. They will qualify somewhere there. <laughs> <laughs> You're completely right. Oh, man. Not they will. Marcel? Not put much pressure on it. Not yeah. more than necessary. They will feel it anyway. They will. But yeah. the pressure this can turn, transform. This pressure can transform into yeah. something very strange, very different. I lost money on the German team I was <laughs> <laughs> four years ago. And then they got better and better, and I thought, hey, hey, hey. Well, so obviously, we've got to say thanks to you. As a final uh, goodbye to South Africans that are watching and, and everyone around the continent, what, what are you personally looking forward to as this being the very first African football World Cup? Make it an African World Cup. Don't try to make it uh, another German World Cup, another Italian World Cup. Yeah. I want to, to have it as a, as, an, as a one and only experience in Africa. Mm -hmm. I come here and I want to see it an African World Cup. So would you mind if we put a lion behind the goalpost? <laughs> <laughs> A live that one. would be an African <laughs> Okay. Should be ready. Wanna give me But I realize that um, uh, football is a black sport, but mm. very few black coaches. In the mm. That's the same thing within the African continent as well, when you look at national teams. There's almost a belief that there's a, there's a lack of respect that players have towards a towards black, a black coach. Um, and there's almost more a respect towards a white coach, and they'll listen to the instructions and they'll... You know, it's, it's quite a... It's a very, very, let me say, anachronistic. Yeah. I don't know. But you see, like uh, we were talking early on, whether you've come from a, a history of colonization, where you from a history of apartheid and everything, there's always a belief. So it's not only in South Africa, but it's the rest of the continent, because the colonizers there... Yeah. You know, it was the same story. So.
You want to cut up a bit of uh, the bread? Get something. <laughs> get something the stomach, the stomach at least used to it. <laughs> Gently. <laughs> the stomach will say, hey, you've been neglecting me the whole day. What's going on? Yeah, and now you want to give me red meat and red wine? Excuse me. <laughs> no, I know those days. I have them as well. This takes up so much time, and you're almost working right around the clock. Uh, if TV gives you a bit of a break, radio's on. If radio gives you a break, TV's on. So that's why I said at some point, one of the two, you know, you've got to say goodbye to it, you know. You have a plan or are you, are you going to take it? I mean, it's a difficult one because you, the amount of work that's been done both on TV and radio is so much. Although I started off on television, um, radio came after, but it's come with such a big responsibility, such a big audience. I was also thinking South African football needs to be kept on its toes. The administrators need to be kept on their toes. And that's the role that the radio has played in tackling the big issues of football, in saying to the administrators, you're messing up here, you're messing up there, you're neglecting this, you're doing that. Um, almost like a watchdog over yeah. the events, you know, and I hope we can, we can improve. If you go for holidays, where you go? I don't. You don't? <laughs> I don't. And that's the sad part, is that in close to 12 years, I haven't taken a, an outright holiday at all. When I was your age, I was. I didn't do sports, I was political correspondent in London. So I was, for 12 years I did politics, no, no sports. And I didn't need no holidays. More than a week, a week three or four days, and now the fifth day I say, hey, there's work to be done, hey. But believe me, it'll come. We're gonna, you're gonna need it. The years are going so quickly. Yeah, November 2008. Because what happened with all the work piling up and no sleep, you're rushing. Like now, we're here today, you, you do all the work like a typical Monday. You go home and then you start preparing for the next day. Sleep fewer hours and it's on and on and on and on. And then decide, you know what, I need to go back to gym. Exercise, get fit and get healthy. Yeah. And gosh, the, that day, I felt, whew, what's going on? You know, I left the gym. Was I'm, I'm dizzy, and there's this pain in my chest. I had no idea what the hell was going on. Sweating. I lie down for about 15 minutes. Pain is there. Ambulance gets there. They try and stabilize me. Pain is still there. Long and short of it, go into the ambulance, hospital, Hospital doctor comes with the scanner, puts it against my chest. He looks at the monitor and says, I'm sorry to tell you, you're having a heart attack right now. Yeah. It's like, what the hell? And from there, I had to change a lot of things in terms of what I do. You will not get more, much more of those chances, you notice. Uh, yeah. That was... Yeah, I, I don't even know. I don't even know. No, this is not a funny story. <laughs> Let's drink to your birthday and, oh, and well, another birthday. <laughs> hold the... Too many more to come. No, thanks to you and good to see you in the country and uh, also to the wedding. Thanks. Yeah. Oh my God. Sam, this is our special. It's one of our bestest, bestest meats. Mm -hmm. It's filet on the bone. Yeah. Stomach. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You obviously knew that two hungry men were coming here, huh? <laughs> you know, I didn't see much today. What I saw, I see this, this what is always dangerous, mm. is the gap between the rich, very rich, and the poor, 
really poor here. So you can see this. I mean, you you, you, you drive by my estates that are yeah. And then we go to to to, to Alexandria. Yeah. So you know, this is will always be something that is attention. Yeah. There is potential for for attention. But then, how do you deal with it? Yeah. Because I mean, the, the estate where um, Rudy Kroll stays, um, I mean, it's a it's one of the most sought after estates. Uh, I think Stuart Baxter also lived there when he was in the country. Yeah. It, it's like your obscene, obscene wealth. I was, I was, I, I didn't want to say the word, but I was. I, I saw estates <laughs> that were obscene. That's what yeah. I wanted to say as yeah. well. Yeah. So it's, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. It's it's a sort of unjustified wealth. You know. So also the issues of crime is that, but to use that to deny an entire population and an entire continent that has, in recent years, given so much to world football in terms of football players and football stars that have really risen up. This is, is a bit unfair. Yeah, but you know, those stories, are they sell. <laughs> if I say everything is nice, yeah. if I but say, ooh, I merely survived it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's what media wants. I mean, even when we were with the whole Ronaldo thing in London. So he mentions, I think someone asked, how's your relationship like with the people at Man United? I was like, no, I mean, I talked to the guys, I talked to Rooney, I, yeah, I talked to a few of the people. So follow-up question, do you talk to Fergie? He says, oh, yeah, I've talked to Fergie very often. So headlines, Ronaldo craves for United. Ronaldo made a mistake of Madrid. Then they twist the whole story around. Just because he had said, no, oh, I mean, at some point, maybe after Madrid, I'd like to go back, yeah. This is a horrible thing for us. Yeah. This is the... No, it's crazy. It brings the whole business into disrepute. Yeah. If, if, you, if you read like this, and you, and you know it's stupid. You know... have twisted it to follow a certain editorial line. Are there people that try to tell you how to do your job? No. I was lucky, never, I never had those. I don't know. No one writes questions for me, no one tells me what to ask, no one tells me what to say. Give me a platform, you tell me who's the guest, mm -hmm. leave it at that. I'll take it forward. I mean, it's it's good for your ego what we do. Mm. Sure it is. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise you wouldn't do it. You have to be pointless. Yeah. As you say, as long as you, you don't sell yourself off, mm -hmm then you're on the right track. Let's drink to that. <laughs> and then you go home. <laughs> cheers. Do you know where your flies got cheers? No, let's keep in touch. I mean, <laughs> no. we don't have to marry Robert. But, but, <laughs> no, um, I think there's a lot. I mean, I can learn a hell of a lot from you. I mean, I've, in, in, in ways that you probably wouldn't know or understand, I've, I've learned from today. Good. And so did I. Yeah. And I think, like you were saying now, you're going to be here for the World Cup. I mean, that in itself already says to me, meet the guy, you know? If you have an hour and, or two or yeah. three for an evening, yeah. I'd be more than yeah. thankful. No, I like the day. Mm. This was a, this was a, I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> but. A real pleasure. Um, I, you you get an you. amen. And Anna. Yeah. Let's keep in touch and look forward to seeing you in about 95 days from now. Take care. <laughs> Promise. We'll teach you the handshake. Okay. Tell me. like this, like that, and then, then you do this, and then you pull away, like that. <laughs> oh, so that's how everyone's going to be shaking your hand here when you get to South Africa. <laughs> Take Good care. One. Thanks so much. Bye. Cheers.